Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're going to talk about the total cryptocurrency asset class and getting a ticket to the show. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out the Telegram channel, which you can find a link to in the description below. Let's go ahead and jump in. Recently, I've received a lot of questions about this downtrend line. If you're unsure of where this come from, comes from, I would remind you that it comes from the Beauty of Mathematics series that we do on the entire asset class on the first of every month. We just released the latest edition of that series yesterday. And there's actually 15 of them. So if you're curious of how, how we've navigated crypto over the last 15 months, at the very least, there's a playlist that you can look at and you'll see this very chart. Now, the reason why we're talking about this is because the yellow line, as a reminder, is the the percent difference between the market capitalization and the fair value logarithmic regression trend line in red. And naturally, when we look at this chart, it's easy to want to draw a downtrend line. It then begs the question, what happens if we reach the downtrend line? Does that definitively mean that the market cycle peak is in? No, it doesn't, right? It doesn't mean that at all, but what it does mean is that the risk of buying crypto at the time that it hits it is a lot higher than buying it before it hits it. Now, it's somewhat deterministic to assume that we will hit the downtrend line ever again, but I do speculate that we will make it there this market cycle. My guess is that we'll likely make it there in either 2022 or 2023, depending on how long the, the, the cycle stretches out. So either 2022 or 2023 is my guess. Of course, we will keep a close eye on it in the event that we make it there in 2021. Now, while that is a deterministic view, I would say thinking about strategies and whatnot before we get there is probably a good thing. The reason I say that is because once we reach that point, you'll probably notice a shift in, in my attitude towards the short-term implications of the asset class. I'm probably not going to be as short-term bullish as I am today, okay? Today, I, I still contend that time is very much on our side. We have a long ways to go this market cycle. This cycle looks like, a, at the very least, a double peak cycle like 2013. For all we know, it could be a triple peak cycle, depending on how long it takes things to play out. But one of the things is that I find is that it's good to talk about things ahead of time because once we're there, it's going to be a lot harder to, to talk about the same type of stuff just because of, of the greed that'll probably be in the market at the time. So hopefully by talking about it now, it can, it can be heard rather than being shifted, you know, um, or, or just brushed off as, as FUD later on. Now, to clarify, if we reach the line, which is just a line, you know, that by basically connected to three prior peaks, it does not mean that's the market cycle peak. It just means the risk at buying at that point is very high. Think about the investors in crypto from 2018, 2019, and 2020. We were accumulating down here. And when we were down here, if you go back and watch the channel a year and a half ago, we were dreaming of days when we would one day come back up to the trend line, dreaming of these days, and always telling ourselves that that would be the day where we would want to take profits, you know, uh, take profits and secure those profits. Now, it begs the question, what happens if someone takes profits at the trend line and we go above it? Right? What happens? Well, there are strategies to navigate that. For instance, there's always dynamically DCAing your cells or just DCAing your cells, dollar cost averaging your cells, meaning you could sell some at the time or not sell any, or you sell some and you just let the rest ride, right? You like, maybe you just have like a, a huddle stack that you don't touch and, and you leave it there. You don't touch it no matter what happens, no matter what model is flashing this time, you say, oh, to hell with the models. You know, I'm just gonna keep this, this stack to the side because I recognize that all models are wrong and only some are useful, right? All of them are wrong, some are useful. If I had to guess, I would say it's very likely that the market cycle peak is not going to fall exactly on this trend line. It could be a below it, it could be above it, I don't know. But the point is to say, 
you can you could always take some profits at the time and leave more in case we are able to overshoot it and we go to higher levels than this model would would predict okay so i want to say that the people that got in over here are going to be up significantly by this time imagine the people that bought bitcoin at three thousand and at four thousand dollars if bitcoin is one day trading between 100 to 200 thousand dollars that's a pretty nice gain on on bitcoin if they are buying Ethereum for $100 and it's one, one day trading for, say, I don't know, $15,000 or something, that's a pretty nice gain. For people who bought ADA at $0.02 cents and $0.03, cents, if one day ADA is trading at $10 and we're up here, again, that's a pretty nice gain. If ADA reaches $15, that's incredible. I mean, a $20 ADA, which is very unlikely, would represent, oh, at least it's unlikely this cycle, would represent a 1,000x move. So you have to think that the early investors are going to be very tempted up here to want to take profits. So if you only joined the show halfway through, for instance, if you came in over here, these gains at this point might not be as attractive to you because you're still trying to get the gains that the people down here got. So you'd rather see it go higher. And the point to say is that you could be right, right? We don't really know exactly where the entire asset class is going to take us. The point is to say, for me, for me personally, I got on this train, I joined the show, this cycle, very heavily in this region, and one day, I do believe, we will be back up in this region, and in my opinion, the risk at that time will be incredibly high. It'll be incredibly high. Now, I say that, and I probably will still have some crypto at all times. I really don't like trading crypto that would incur short-term capital gains implications, which means I, I need to hold my crypto for at least a year. Since I'm, a lot, since I'm very frequently buying crypto, except during months like March and April, when we're, when we're so far extended beyond belief, and May, I am generally buying crypto a, a lot of different times. Therefore, I have positions that are never, that, or I have positions usually that are not in long-term capital gains territory, meaning I tend to have a hodl stack, okay? So we have to keep that in mind. Now, if I personally take profits up at this region, but I'll actually stick to the, to the risk levels as well, but I'm gonna use this to, to help guide market cycle peaks and whatnot. If I personally take profits at those levels, that doesn't mean that I, I, I wanna see the asset class then drop down the next day because I'll likely DCA sell, right? I might sell some and then hope it goes up. And then if it doesn't go up, then at least I sold some. I will still, of course, be rooting for everyone going after higher gains, right? I have no problem with people making more money than I do. I really, I really don't. I, I want everyone to make money. Um, and I, I hope that everyone in crypto, as time goes on, I hope everyone does see their portfolios in general grow, okay? So one thing to consider with crypto is that Time, you know, you can you can jump in and out whenever you want. If you want to jump jump on the train here and then jump off the train here, there's nothing wrong with that. If someone jumped on the train here and then got off of it up here and has no interest in getting back on it now, there's not anything necessarily wrong with that. They're they're just they're they're investing for their own uh, against their own risk tolerance or or what they're comfortable with. Maybe they don't have the money. Um, and so you have to consider that people are in different situations. The whole diamond hands thing, in my opinion, is just a meme, right? It, it should not be taken seriously. You know, if you do ultimately come into life-changing wealth, um, let's say you put in a lot of money on an altcoin and it's up a lot and, and you hold it and you never take profits and, and then you watch it ultimately go back down one day, that's not really a great feeling, right? That's really not a great feeling. And I can tell you because I've experienced that before. Taking profits on the way up, um, especially if you think even we're in it within a few weeks of a market cycle peak, in my opinion, is not a bad idea. And the idea is you take some profits, maybe, and then you let it ride a little bit longer. You let the rest of the position ride. If it keeps going up, you take more profits. And then if it keeps going up, you take more. And then one day it'll drop and you're probably going to wish you had sold the rest of your stack. But at least you did take some profits on the way up and you can at least look back and say, you know what, no matter what happens from here on out, I took those profits and with those profits, I was able to do something else with them. Okay. Maybe it was buy a house. Maybe it was pay off your student loans. I don't know what it is, but whatever it is, 
when you do take profits at say either local tops or market cycle peaks, it, it doesn't take away from um, the fact that no matter what happens with crypto after that in the short term, you were able to realize those gains and you can use that for something else. My thinking here is that crypto still has a ways to go this market cycle. Okay, I, I do think we have a ways to go this market cycle. I, I don't think that 64K was the top. I do think there's going to be a lot of shakeouts, though. I mean, I, I don't think it's going to be smooth sailing from here until the market cycle peak. I, I really don't. There's going to be there's going to be a lot more shakeouts on the way up. Um, and, and you need to be prepared for that. OK, um, recognize that if you're new to the cryptocurrency asset class, that 20 percent drops are fairly standard. OK, 30 percent drops in a bull market, 40 percent drops. It, it, it's standard stuff. OK. If we can see cryptocurrencies go up by 20% in a day, we can also see them drop by 20% in a day. So recognize, for new investors, recognize what you're getting yourself into, okay? And as long as you recognize where the general direction that crypto is headed, the short-term price movements are, are just noise. They're, they're, they're just noise, okay? Now, one of the things I would like to say to new investors who always have a tr who always have trouble, say, getting into the market because they feel like they're you know they're they're buying um, at the worst possible time, especially to the people that bought at say 64k. I know there's some people that bought at 64k for Bitcoin. There's people who bought Ethereum at 4400. There's people who bought um, a lot of different cryptocurrencies at their local tops. My advice is to say, or my general thinking. Um, is to say that you know time is on your side whether you want to look at it in terms of the market cycle or in general with crypto because even if even if the market cycle peak is is not where we think it is the logarithmic regression trend line shows us that the asset class is maturing and it should trend up with time so making sure you're getting positions and say the top cryptocurrencies as like your blue chips is, is very important because if you go so far down the list and you're constantly betting on micro caps a lot of those will die, okay? That's just the truth. A lot of those will die. It's, it's really good. You can have your micro cap positions if you want, but don't forsake the blue chips. Don't forsake them. They will help grow your portfolio, portfolio over the long haul. So I'll leave you with this. If you're new to crypto and you're really wondering what to expect, my advice is to think on a multi-year time frame. Maybe even think out five to 10 years. Over the next five to 10 years, I would expect your portfolio to grow. You don't always have to time the tops and the bottoms. You just need a ticket to the show.